In this last video for section 6.1, we are going to take a look at the subtraction rule, which is also known as the principle of inclusion exclusion for two sets. And we're going to look at the division rule. We're going to start by looking at the subtraction rule, which is just the principle of inclusion exclusion for two sets. So we're going to jump right into an example of this without actually looking at how we're going to find the answer yet. Don't you love when people do that? So what I wanna do is I just wanna to try to visualize exactly what's going on here. When we have the subtraction rule, essentially what we're saying is we can't use the normal addition rule. And so if I'm reading this question, how many bit strings of length seven either start with one or, so or indicates plus, so you might think, okay, great addition rule, or end with the three bit zero, zero, zero. Well, let's take a look at our Venn diagram and exactly what we can show with it. So in this circle, I'm going to put bits that start with one. And in this circle, I'm going to put bits that end in zero, zero, zero. And then in the middle, let's use yellow for that. In here, I'm putting any bits that both start with one and end in zero, zero, zero. So here's how most students go about it. We would say, okay, well, if it starts with one, we know there's seven bits uh, and I should, um, just make sure we understand if we're talking about a bit string, it's a string of zeros and ones. So you're not going to have any other numbers in there besides zeros and ones. So again, I've got five, six, seven spaces. So if I know that it starts with a one, then there's only one option here, but there's two options, zero or one, for any of the other values. So what I end up with here is two to the sixth power, one times two to the sixth, which is two to the sixth. Then if I look at the blue option, which is ends in zero, zero, zero. So we know this is a zero, this is a zero, this is a zero. So just one option on those, but no other restrictions. So this is two to the fourth. And then if I look, at anything that was counted in both categories means I started with a one and ended with a zero, zero, zero. There's one option here, one here, one here. Let's move that guy over just a little bit. And then we have two options for those three guys in the middle. So that's two to the third. So if I'm trying to put these values on my Venn diagram, two to the sixth is 64. And so a lot of students put 64 here, which isn't quite right because this circle has to include everything that starts with one, including those that end in zero, zero, zero. So this guy is actually 64 minus the overlap. So 64 minus eight, which is 56. So there's 56 that start with one, but don't end in zero, zero, zero. There's eight that start with one and end in zero, zero, zero. And there's, this guy is 16, 16 minus eight, which gives me eight that don't start with one. So that means of course they start with zero and end in zero, zero, zero. So we had to do a lot of subtraction because we really wanted to keep all of the values in our Venn diagram straight. But what I want to just um, emphasize, I guess, is that this center is anything that fit into both categories. Now, the way that I've computed the 56 and the eight means I can now say that my sum is 56 plus eight plus eight, because I've done the math already in finding the 56 and the eight. 
and that of course is going to give me 72. So 72 is my correct solution. Now, it's not feasible for me to do that, especially if I'm dealing with, say, five sets or six sets. So instead, we're looking at the subtraction rule that says, if you can do a task in n1 ways or n2 ways, then the total number of ways to do the task is adding those two ways together and then subtracting the number of ways that were counted twice. So instead of doing 56 plus 8 plus 8, I can say, let me find a color I haven't used, I can say 64 plus 16, and this was the eight, hopefully you guys got that two to the third was eight, and that's where I got this value. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I should have pointed that out. So again, I can say instead 64 plus 16 minus eight. So I'm subtracting the number of ways that were counted twice, and again, that gives me 72. Let's formalize this subtraction rule before looking at another example together. So the subtraction rule again says A union B, the cardinality or the number of elements in A union B is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B, subtracting that intersection just one time. So again, if we're looking at a picture, then A union B would be anything inside both circles, whereas A would be everything in the first circle, and B would be everything in the second circle, and then the intersection is that part that we have to subtract just one time because we counted it twice. Now, before we look at this next question, we need to make sure we understand the rest of the part. So I'm gonna actually get rid of the yellow box and make it a different color, just so we can make sure we're very clear. The purple box indicates the entire sample space, so everything in the sample space, which if you've already sort of read ahead, this guy is the 200 applicants. It's total number of applicants from college graduates. So what that means is sometimes there's going to be, I'm trying to find a color we haven't used yet, and I'm coming up short here. Um, let's use red. So here would be anything that's not inside the union. So this would be A union B not. So anything that's not inside the union of those two sets. So not in A, not in B. So that's gonna come into play here. So now let's look at the question. A software company receives 200 applications from college graduates for a job planning a new ed tech application. If 107 applicants majored in web development, so that's, we're gonna call that A, 107 majored in web development, 116 majored in computer science, and 23 majored in something else. How many applicants majored in both web development and computer science? So really they're asking for this. This is our variable. What's the intersection? Now that's easy to solve for, except guess what? We don't know this guy yet. It didn't say this many were in both web development or computer science, either or. It said there's 200 total, and by the way, there's 23 that didn't major in either of those things. So we have to make sure we understand how to find A union B. So if there's 200 total, and there's 23 here, 23 are not in A union B, then that leaves us with 177 that are in A union B. So that's this guy, 177. Guess what? Now we have enough to be able to solve this. It's much, much easier. But again, sometimes they like to throw in that extra little bit to make sure you understand exactly what you're doing. So I have 177 equals 107 plus 116 minus A intersect B. So 107 plus 116 is 223 
And then of course, I'm going to say 223 or 177 minus 223, which is going to give me a negative value, but that's okay because this is negative two. So we get negative 46 is equal to negative the cardinality of A intersect B. And so really we know that the solution is 46. So A intersect B, the cardinality of A intersect B is 46. When you're doing a story problem, please make sure that you understand you're answering a story problem with a sentence. So yes, I have found the correct solution, 46. But the question said, how many applicants majored in both web development and computer science? So make your professor happy and say, there were 46 students who majored in both web development and computer science. We're going to speak very quickly about the division rule, but it's kind of silly because we actually are going to talk about it in more detail later. But let's just do it because it's in your textbook and I want to make sure that you have all of the tools necessary to answer any questions that I might assign you. So the division rule says there are n divided by d ways to do a task if it can be done doing a procedure that can be carried out in n ways where there are d corresponding outcomes per group. I've also listed a couple of other ways that it can be phrased, but essentially what they're saying is if there's n ways to do something, but there are d that are essentially the same in some way, then make sure you divide by d in order to have the true value. And we're going to take a look at an example so that that makes sense to you. I've copied the division rule up at the top of the page just so you can refer back to it as we're talking, but let's take a look at this seating problem. We have a seat for four people around a circular table. So again, I've got a circle and this is seat A and B and C and D. And what the hard part of this is, because if we didn't care about the condition. We would just say, great, there's four people. So we can have four people in A. We can have three people in B. We can have two people in C and one in D. Of course, meaning there's four options. Once we've seated the person in A, there's three people left that we could put in B. Once we've seated A and B, there's two people left we could put in C. And then there's just whoever's left over to put in D. So four times three times two times one is 24. So that would be our solution. The tricky part or where the division rule comes into play is it says two seatings are considered the same when each person has the same left and right neighbor. So essentially what we're saying is yes, 24 is a good start, but let's say I put person one here and two here and three here and four here. Well, that's considered the exact same seating as if I would put one here and two here and three here and four here, because essentially what I did is I took everything and shifted it to the right one position. Or perhaps I shifted it two positions. So one is here and two is here and three is here and four is here. And hopefully you're getting the idea. Lastly, I could shift three positions. So that's one, two, three, four. So basically what we're saying is we've counted the same seating four times. And so the division rule says, great, you've counted it four times. That's D. So 24 divided by four is your solution, which is of course six. So six, there are six different ways that I can seat four people around a circular table. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the pigeonhole principle, which is section 6.2 of your text.